Hello, welcome to the seventh class on design and implementation of uh, software engineering program under EduSat 18. In this class, we are going to discuss about the implementation aspects of the software. Until now, we have discussed about modeling, design, mapping the modeling into the design aspects and then we have seen rational unified process and how to implement that into our design aspect and then once the design is completed, we are going to move into the implementation. I am Srinivasan from RV College of Engineering. This is the seventh class. Today, we are going to talk about implementation issues and open source development. Design and implementation. Implementation includes two aspects. One is implementing the design that means building the system and the second one is deploying the system that means moving the system into operational area and making it operational. These two are different phases of implementation and as we have seen in rational unified uh, process, we have the following uh, phases business modeling, uh, requirements, design, implementation, testing, deployment, configuration and change, management, project management and environment. And now, having completed the modeling and the design, we have come to the implementation stage, where maximum time is spent in the construction basically. So, construction as well as transition. So, when we come to transition, it comes to into the deployment aspect, where we will be spending most of the time and in the construction is the implementation phase as per our rational unified process and in each of them, we have inception, elaboration, construction and transition. We will see now how actually we have to progress with the implementation. The constructing the program after design basically involves the programming standards, the language being used and uh, the environment, development environment and the sequence in which they have to be programmed and all that, which is actually a process which you have already learnt in the programming languages, data structures and then uh, algorithms etcetera. So, we are not going to cover those aspects here. Now, having completed the application or having built the application, uh, the next step is about the testing the application as we move as we go forward with the building of the application, which is having unit test and uh, integration text uh, etcetera, which has been covered uh, by earlier classes. So, we are not going to cover those aspects here. So, we are going to uh, actually the deployment phase. So, anyway the implementation process itself consists of either acquisition or development of the software, testing, documentation has to run in parallel, versioning of the software, we will see what is the meaning of versioning of the software data porting and conversion, when we go to the deployment, we have to port the existing data and convert if there is any application running on the previous version or previous uh, uh, platform etcetera. And then deployment of the system itself, our system, current system what has been developed or acquired, training the people who have to operate or maintain the system. So, these are the uh, tasks that have been uh, uh, identified for implementation process. So, it is shown uh, diagrammatically the phases, project planning phase, analysis phase, design phase. Now, we have come to the implementation phase. The activities are construct software components, which is actually the programming, programming standards, language selection etcetera, including the 
design patterns and then uh, reuse of the existing components etcetera and uh, verify and uh, test the product, convert data and then train and document install the system. These are the implementation phase activities. Support phase activities uh, have uh, maintained the system, enhance the system and support users. Coming back to the implementation phase, we will see now the program development is time consuming, one third of development is labor is uh, program development, one third to one half of project development schedule. Okay. So, the major forms of conversion is once we release the application for implementation, then both old and new systems are operated simultaneously until IS team and management agrees to completely take over the new system or convert into the new system. Usually, this is done for critical systems where old system has to work in case new system is having some problem or something like that, we should be able to revert back or the pilot uh, aspect is one department will adopt the new system and see if uh, they are satisfied then the whole system, old system will be converted into the uh, new system. This is known as uh, the pilot uh, form of conversion. The next one is phased only parts of the new system are uh, only a few departments or offices are brought into the new system and if it is working fine, we will go back, uh, we will continue with the new system and then we will go back and convert all the old systems into the new system. If there is any problem, we can revert back to the old system and the last one is plunge that means directly abandon the old system and bring the new system so that everything is new and then people are trained and all that, we will go with the new system once the confirmation is done about the working of the new system. This is the major forms of conversion. The next thing is deployment. How do we deploy? Getting software out of the hands of the developers into the hands of the users and then users are usually working in the production environment or operational environment. Developers are working in the development environment and then this deployment may have multiple stages like for example, more than 50 percent of commission software is not used mostly because it fails at the deployment stage. We have to understand this, 80 percent of the cost of software comes at and after deployment that also we have to be aware of because deployment is not a trivial work and in fact, that is the most important aspect because that is where people or users start using the system. What are the issues that make it hard? The thing is business process, most large software systems require the customer to change the way they work which may create retraining and other issues for the end users. Has this been properly thought through? If there is a new way of working, have the existing users been trained in it, informed about it, these are the aspects we have to consider. So, next step is about the training, no point in deploying a software if the customers cannot use it. To use a software also requires training to be provided to the users and deployment itself, how physically to get the software installed. That means, is it packaged, is it coming on a CD or is it to be delivered by the net, how, uh, who is required and uh, what environment is expected, whether it is Windows environment or whether it is Unix environment or whether it is Linux, what other components are required. So, the physical basically the UML deployment diagram will be of help when we consider the deployment aspect. Next one is, is the customer's hardware up to the job that also we have to see because the software may be ready maybe customer needs to upgrade his hardware because of the size of the software etcetera, but is he ready with the equipment. Expertise, does the customer have the IT expertise to install the software, whether he can install it himself or he needs some hand holding in including for operation and maintenance, whether he requires some expert to be in the initial stages available on site 
for one or two days until the software becomes uh, you know stabilized. Integration with other systems of the customer is another aspect. If there are other systems, how well the new system is getting integrated into the system because other systems are beyond the scope of the current development, but still interface or integration with the, those systems may be one of the requirements. So, we will take care uh, we will look into the deployment diagrams of UML as we have already uh, discussed. This is a strong link between component diagrams and deployment diagram. Deployment diagram show the physical relationship between the hardware and software in a system. Hardware elements are computers, embedded processors, devices, sensors, peripherals etcetera as required and they are used to show the nodes where software components reside on the runtime system. We will see the pictorially it is shown here these are actually the nodes and then within this the components will be shown. So, a node usually represent a piece of hardware in the system. A connection depicts the communication path used by the hardware this is the connection and usually indicates the method such as TCP IP is the connection if it is there. So, this is actually the deployment issue. Now, we will come to what are the issues in implementation we will see the most important focus is not on programming here because programming has already been done or although this is obviously important on other implementation issues we are going to focus because programming is a separate issue and a separate chapter. One of the most important thing what we discussed in the earlier class about design patterns and all that is most important aspect is reuse. So, modern software is constructed by reusing existing components or systems and when we are developing software we should make as much reuse as possible because our earlier experience and earlier collection of components and our earlier knowledge effort should not go waste and then we should not reinvent the wheel if it is already available we should use the existing component or even existing idea or existing pattern we will see those things. The second point is configuration management and during development process we have to keep track of many different versions of each software and in a configuration management system it keeps track of what are the versions and uh, the releases of these components or the systems that are required. Uh, to be integrated into the system. Uh, these things we will see in detail when we go forward and the host target environment. That means, the idea is the proper products or the software application is developed in a development environment and then when we are porting it to operational or production environment, we have to be aware that this transition takes place smooth and then there is no disturbance in the production or operational environment. And production software does not usually execute on the same computer because the environment is completely different on production systems we are not allowed to develop the application and once we develop and test it and then confirm that it works in the production environment which may require uh, you know duplicating the production environment in a separate uh, machine called as staging or something like that and then testing is also required. Testing may be done on a different machine, development may be done on a different machine. So, testing may be done on what is known as QA uh, area and then after testing has been confirmed and completed and then satisfactorily done then it is may be moved to the staging area which actually imitates the production or operational environment and then after all the tests have been done and confirmed then only it is ready for moving into the production or operational area. So, we develop on one computer and execute it on a separate computer known as the target system or operational or production system. These are the implementation issues. What are the reuse implementation issues we will see until uh, 1990s or even uh, into the beyond 
most new software was developed from uh, scratch by writing all code in a high level programming language. But later on with the development of the ideas of object oriented development and object oriented uh, analysis and the development of the languages supporting uh, these object oriented concepts including uh, Java, C++, Simula, etc. Now, we are able to reuse the components or component based software engineering we are able to uh, deploy or we are able to implement. So, that our efforts or the components are kept as uh, in a library, so that uh, the functionalities can be reused uh, provided uh, with the object oriented concepts of uh, uh, providing interface for the system and all that message oriented uh, co component integration etcetera. The only significant reuse or software was the reuse of functions earlier, but today we are able to even reuse the uh, ideas like abstract uh, uh, com abstract ideas like design patterns or even a component level or even at the object level or even at the system level. A part of the system standalone system uh, uh, itself can be used as an extension or it may be wrapped inside another component, so that it can be accessed. These are the functions that will be uh, used uh, for reuse. An approach to development based around the reuse of existing software emerged and is now generally used for business and scientific software. Today, no non-trivial uh, software is started from scratch. Any complex software we will see if existing components are available or existing systems are available where are existing objects, how can we reuse the ideas or the patterns. So, that is the uh, power of reuse which will reduce the uh, effort and the cost as well as improve the quality. So, what are the reuse levels as we have already said this abstraction level at this level software is not reused per se directly, but the knowledge of successful abstractions in the design of software is used like design patterns etcetera or the second one is at the object level at this level software objects are directly reused from a library rather than writing the code afresh. At component level, a component is nothing but a collection of objects which is specifically made into certain uh, meet, uh, meet certain functionalities. So, the components are collection of objects and object classes that are reused in application systems as the need may be and the final one is system level at this level entire application systems are reused. So, there are four reuse levels where we can make use of. And now, we have to consider whether always we should use uh, reuse concept or is there any downside to it or what are the benefits etcetera. And for reuse, we must have uh, a good plan and a, and a mature uh, system of management of software, so that we keep track of what are our assets, what we have provided uh, developed earlier and uh, we have easy access to that. If we have to search for it again and again, then the cost of searching may be quite high. The cost of the time spent in looking for software to reuse and assessing whether or not it meets your needs or may be high, because even when we identify a component commonly used component which is available off the shelf and uh, it may be a commercial component and we may have to buy it, even if we purchase it or buy it, we have to test that software, because it is not made by us. And then when we have, when we are testing, we it consumes a considerable time and effort and cost, whether it is worthwhile doing it or whether it is worthwhile building it from scratch. These are the issues that is to be considered, where applicable the cost of buying the reusable software we have to look into. For large off the shelf systems, this cost can be very high that also we have to be aware. And if it is a specialized system, then the cost may be very high. It may be worthwhile uh, to build it ourselves and then keep it uh, with us as our uh, property for next use. The cost of adopting and configuring the reusable software components or systems to reflect the requirements of the system that are being developed. So, that also we have to consider that means, 
the components that are available may not be 100 percent suitable, it may be suitable only 70 percent, what is the cost of making it 100 percent suitable. That means, we have to tweak or we have to repair the existing off the shelf software or commercial software what we are going to buy and then this kind of modification whether it is worthwhile doing it what is the cost of it that also we have to consider and the cost of integrating reusable software elements with each other. Suppose, we procure two different components from two different vendors is it possible what is the effort involved in making it work interactively or how to make it integrate them together so that it meets our purpose and what is the cost involved in it. So, these are the aspects that we have to consider and now we will come to the configuration management. The configuration management is the name given to the general process of managing a changing software system. Basically, configuration management is uh, different components are developed at different times and by different uh, programmers and these components they undergo continuous change and continuous change may be of two types, one may be for enhancement or defect uh, uh, removal or bug removal. The other one may be some people ask for some uh, facilities and uh, other customers uh, they ask for other facilities. The same base component we, ha we may have to uh, configure it in such a way it uh, one version meets the requirement of one set of customers another version meets the requirement of another set of customers. But in that case we have to maintain two different versions of the uh, software so that whoever is asking for whatever version this two is simply a number if there are many number of customers asking for a specialized or customized software and then the base functionality is same then we may have to have may, we may the software vendor or the maker has to maintain several versions of the software to keep track of which version is working where one point. The second point is continuous improvement also will take place and then whenever new release comes whether these new releases are given to the people free of cost or it is given at a cost both we have to maintain because we have to see to it even the old release will require maintenance by the vendor. So, that means we should be able to keep track of what release is working where and then the details of every release. So, even though they are small changes we have to keep track of these changes change management is one of the most important aspect it is required for supporting the old version it is required for knowing the new version it is required for moving from old version to new version it is required for any changes bug removal and all those things. Basically the idea is to make the component as a unit uh, self sufficient, but having a clear cut identity even with a small change. The aim of configuration management is to support the system integration process, so that all developers can access the project code and documents in a controlled way. Documents means whenever the software changes or functionality changes some code is changed we have to upgrade the document. That means, for old version one set of document will be there for new version another set of document will be there. So, that means, documents also will go with the version of the software. What is the difference between this version and release that is the question. So, the version is if there is any major change done to the system the version is changed and for a given version if there is a small changes that are done then then they are giving uh, they are given as a new release like for example, version number and release number. So, like for example, we are seeing in uh, open source uh, uh, Linux systems LTS means long term uh, uh, release or long term support is provided. So, and uh, other things are uh, the uh, when it is actually not uh, ready for long term support that means, it is not uh, stable then uh, the intermediate releases are given and then 
uh, those releases uh, they allow people to use it and then come out with uh, if they find any uh, problem or any bug or any defect or something like that or even desirable things like enhancements and uh, wish th wishful uh, th uh, things like uh, uh, I wish that this is able to integrate with other systems and things like that. Those things are collected and then made it into a stable system and then a long term uh, release is um, uh, given. So, uh, for every system which is a collection of components which may be a collection of objects we have to see to it that each component is given an identification in terms of version and release each object is given a version and release and then for a specific package only these identified components and objects are used for compiling and releasing and every set of this configuration must be maintained and this is quite a complex job. So, because of that there are configuration management softwares specialized softwares that are available which will take care of the configuration management issues. So, some of them is same component multiple people are working on it how do we handle it? same object multiple people are working on it multiple programmers located in different places. So, in that case we must have a proper controlled way of releasing these components to the or the uh, source code to the developers and then controlled way of giving it back into the system. So, that it is uh, in a way um, tracked monitored. So, that if there is any problem we are able to identify what is the problem and immediately bring back uh, the correct uh, version of the uh, system and then put it back is something very similar to this. In an automobile for every component there is a number. So, that if there is any tire or something like that if it is uh, going out or uh, we have to replace it by just giving the part number we are able to procure it and then fix it. The same way even in software which is made up of multiple components we should be able to identify each component and get only that component into the system and make it rework or if there is a crash or something like that we should be able to build it back. These are the aspects of um, configuration management. So, it consists of as we have already said version management where support is provided to keep track of the different versions of software components version management systems include facilities to coordinate development by several programmers and system integration where support is provided to help developers define what versions of components are used to create each version of a system. This description is then used to build a system automatically by compiling and linking the required components. Problem tracking when support is provided to allow users to report bugs and other problems and to allow all developers to see who is working on these problems and when they are fixed. Okay. The third uh, aspect is when a component is modified to meet certain functionality as required and then the version is given this detail must be available somewhere otherwise what has been done by one programmer may be undone or may be redone or again the same thing may be done by another programmer. So, the programmers or the developers must be knowing what are the versions that are available, what versions are providing what functionalities. Then it is easy to integrate or build system or even use uh, reuse the uh, component because unless we know the functionality of the component it is not possible to reuse and unless we are able to make changes to the component we will not be able to reuse and when we make changes to component unless we track those changes through version number and release uh, number we will not be able to or the developers will not be able to reuse the uh, components or reuse the available uh, systems. So, configuration management is actually a complex task where each for each and every uh, product as well as for artifact, artifact means uh, documents etcetera a version number is given which is maintained which is linked together. So, that a product with this version is related to a document with this version 
so that if there is any change the document changes are also reflected and then they are linked together and then if there is any change done to the component or the product itself then the old uh, version is also kept the new version is also kept but uh, identifiably uh, the system should be able to take care of it and then if a system is built using different components then the version of all the components and the version of the system should be maintained and then automatically these things should be done by configuration management activity. So, that if there is any problem in maintenance or if there is any problem in deployment immediately we will be able to see which component is exactly the reason for it and then go back or correct it or bring it back. So, that is the uh, functioning of configuration management activity and uh, one of the important aspect is the product is having uh, multiple uh, uh, product uh, the product is having multiple stages like for example, source code is one step and then compiling after compiling we create the object code is another step after linking and then we make into executable that may be another uh, 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 another uh, uh, product. So, all these things must be having the proper uh, control or proper versions etcetera. Like uh, for example, source code control systems is an automatic tool for tracking source code files and controlling changes to uh, those files and source code files are basically usually text file or programming uh, the program files. Repository is uh, of this uh, code and programmer actions are required which is check out file in read only mode that means, programmers can look into the file, but they will not be able to do any editing or updating. Check out file in read write mode that means, they can check out the file and then they can read and they can write, but they may not be able to update it on the system and check in a modified file that means, if they have modified a file and uh, they have checked that it is working on their system and then with proper approvals which is actually a change control board or something like that uh, depending on the organization and then there is a manager or a project manager who looks into these changes after confirming that it can be uh, checked in to uh, the system. Then this modified file is actually uploaded or checked into the system subsequently those versioned files are taken out and then compiled and then again they are checked in with a different version number. So, this is actually the pro, uh, pro, uh, this is actually the process of versioning. Basically, we have a mechanism to manage system changes that is actually configuration management. Complex systems developed, installed and maintained in series of versions to simplify testing and support. So, whenever we are testing we should be aware what was there earlier, what is there now. So, that we are able to keep track of if they have the new changes have created any problem for the existing functionality, then we should be able to identify it. So, and identify it and then identify the version of the old one and then uh, uh, identify what changes has resulted in what impact or a new defect has been introduced into the system or a new bug has been injected into the system because of the changes etcetera we will be able to find out. So, that immediately we can bring back the old version and then start working on the new version. They are known as incomplete testing version is alpha version and once we are sure that uh, yes we have done all the changes whatever is required bug removal etcetera, but uh, now we want to release it for uh, users to test it not for production use. So, then it is called as beta version. So, that end users can start testing the version and then once uh, finally, it is uh, approved by all the end users and then the all the testing etcetera. Then what is known as the production release and uh, what we have to understand is all of these releases are given a separate version number and so that we have alpha version, we have a beta version, we have production release version and then maintenance release means periodically the system may be upgraded or uh, bug removed or something like that. So, these small changes will result into the maintenance release. So, version is the main number, 
release is the smaller number. So, release is for maintenance, bug fixes and all that, version is for making any major changes, major functionalities into the system and then each component must be, we should maintain what is the version etcetera. So, that we are able to uh, collect or integrate a system using specific version of the components and then the system is having its own version and then keep track of actually what is happening. This is the uh, functioning of configuration management. Now, when we move the new system or uh, when we move the new application into the production, if the system is already working, we have the existing data that is available. What are we going to do with it? Let us say we change the database. Okay. So, if the database is the old database and uh, we are implementing a new database for whatever reason, how do we get data from the old system or the old database management system and load it into the new database management system? Is it done simultaneously or first it is done and then, then new system is uh, given or is it the old uh, database is kept as it is, the new database is also kept and then for old data the uh, system automatically accesses the old database for new data it automatically accesses the new database and over a period of time the old data is moved to the new data completely. So, there may be different ways of doing these things depending on the requirement of the customer or depending on the uh, criticality of the uh, system. So, data is needed at system startup, files or databases of system are being replaced. So, what is how, how we are going to replace it, whether are we going to replace it wholesale or are we going to replace it uh, gradually, are we going to use both the systems, manual records what is to be done, files or databases of other systems if it is getting integrated into the other system what is to be done user feedback during normal system operation that also we have to consider and uh, uh, the display of the data from the old system or printing the data from the new system because if the printer functionality is uh, available in the old system itself and then the uh, new pa um, new format uh, has to be integrated with the printing application of the old system all those uh, things will come they are all part of the data conversion reuse of existing databases reloading database contents, creating new databases, they are all part of the data conversion. Reuse of existing database means, yes only the application por portion is changed, but the database contains uh, database system remains as it is. And if we are having a new database, how do we reload all the old data into the new database? There may be huge amount of data, is it required or it is not required, because the old system is already there, which can be used for analysis and things like that as a data warehouse or something like that. For uh, if we have to create a new database, then uh, how do we make use of the data in the old database? All those things are part of the data conversion also known as migrating old system into the new system. Migration is one of the most important aspects when we are going for a new system. So, these are all the aspects of uh, uh, copy data content from uh, old database to the new database that is create new database and then the new database is there and then here from old database we copy and convert data and then put it into the new database. The other one is upload, modify and reload existing database. So, we use the existing database itself, but into a, in a new format basically modify database structure and then uh, data new uh, database is created, extract and delete the data, temporary data store is there, convert and reload data and then create a uh, uh, new data structure in the same database. So, two uh, types are shown here, there could be any number of solutions depending on the uh, requirement and uh, the ideas that are available at that point of time and uh, the infrastructure and the setup basically existing as well as the new. Considering these factors, the uh, release manager or the implementation uh, manager has to take care of uh, the system. Now, after identifying all these things, next comes the installation. After development and testing, system must be put into operation. 
So, this is known as installation. Important planning considerations are cost of operating both systems in parallel, detecting and correcting errors in new system, potentially disrupting the company and IS operations, training personnel and customers with new procedures. Basically, we have discussed uh, these things already. That is, when we are going for the new operations, then there may be disruption. We have to minimize the disruption or we have to see to it that there is no disruption. Detecting and correcting errors in the new system. If the old system is already working, new system uh, should be having even better performance or it should be better. If it is having any error, should be detected uh, in time and then corrected and put it. Whether both the systems should be working in parallel, that also we have seen in the earlier uh, uh, data migration uh, case. And training personnel and customers with the new procedures that is required, so that customers and uh, end users will be happy to use the new system. Otherwise, the system will become useless or may not be used. So, there are different types, uh, direct installation, overlapping systems turn off both systems concurred for brief time. That means, they will be working simultaneously new and old system and if there is any problem is coming in the new system, it will be corrected and once this once it stabilizes, uh, the old system can be slowly taken off the line. So, advantages simplicity and fewer logistic issues to manage, disadvantages risks due to uh, no backup if uh, the direct installation is done. Okay. So, Parallel installation, old and new systems operated together for extended period of time. There are advantages, of course, uh, the system failure and the continual backup is there, low system, uh, low risk, but disadvantages, cost is high, acquiring extra space because we, we, we need to, need, uh, to maintain old and new system, we need huge uh, disk space, etcetera, increasing managerial and logistical complexity, etcetera. Phased installation is another one. New systems are installed in series of steps or phases as we have already seen in the earlier case, whether it is uh, uh, phased uh, or whether it is over uh, um, uh, uh, big bang or something like that. Okay. So, documentation is another aspect where all the documentation must be up to date, new set of document must be available both electronic as well as print, online manuals, etcetera. So, that is another aspect to be taken during implementation that is the system documentation and all. User documentation is also one of the important aspects of uh, the new release and ongoing training and user support uh, we have to provide, online documentation and troubleshooting, resident experts, help desk, technical support, etcetera. And then we will see into the, they are the aspects of host to target development. Most software is developed on one computer, but runs on separate machine as I have already said about the um, staging area and the testing area and development area or development environment, staging environment, testing environment and operational environment. They are all different machines, different environments, different systems. When it is moved from one stage to another stage, it should be uh, seamless and then it should work correctly. At every stage, we have to test it, especially for critical software and then mission critical software. And then we have to make sure that once it moves into the um, staging area, unless everything is perfect, we should not move it into the uh, operational area. So, that is the, uh, some tools are used uh, in this uh, graphical editing tools, uh, language debugging system, they are all required for development platform tools like Eclipse and all those things and they are all part of uh, the uh, helps in the implementation also moving the system from uh, uh, development area into the operational area, etcetera. So, we have integrated development environments like uh, Eclipse, uh, uh, etcetera and then uh, is the development area environments. Now, component and system deployment factors are if a component is designed for a specific hardware architecture or relies on some other software system, it must obviously be deployed on a platform that provides the required hardware and suppose some component may require a runtime system for example, VB run or VB uh, etcetera and uh, Java virtual machine for example. So, they are all, uh, there is a dependencies for components and then we have to uh, uh, understand those things and then uh, uh, deploy the uh, component system uh, with the proper uh, existing or uh, required system implemented. And uh, we will see uh, in the final uh, this one, the open source development. Having done this development ourselves and all that and then when we are talking about uh, reuse, we have to consider the fact that open source development is an approach to software development. 
in which the source code of a software system is published and volunteers are invited to participate in the development process. The idea is the open source development is a movement basically which says that the source code is not proprietary to anyone, it can be published so that people who have access to it, they will be able to make modifications and uh, because lot of people are working on it, the idea is in the end we will get always a better system. Its roots are in the free software foundation fsf.org which advocates that source code should not be proprietary, but rather should always be available for users to examine and modify as they wish. Open source software extended this idea by using the internet to recruit a much larger population of volunteer developers. Many of them are also users of the code. Basically, it, it does not mean that it is out of control. It is controlled, but only thing is there is no ownership here. However, there are the controls are even if there is ownership, there are different types of licenses that are available, so that uh, it will not go uh, out of control. The idea is if we have companies, if they adopt open source, then uh, there may be any number of uh, maintenance people that are available. In proprietary software what happens, we are uh, the companies are bound to organizations are bound to have maintenance uh, agreement only with the people who are actually owning those product. In this case, because it is open source, there may be lot of uh, organizations available which are ready to maintain because the code is available in the, uh, in the open, basically it is available free. The best known open source product is of course, Linux operating system, which is widely used as a server system and increasingly as a desktop environment. Other important open source products are Java for example, the Apache web server and MySQL database management system, they are all open source systems, which is actually becoming more and more popular and people are using them uh, even for uh, production systems or operational systems. Then the issues are should the product that is being developed make use of open source components or should an open source approach be used for the software's development. That means, whenever I am developing my software, should I use open source approach so that I put my software source code on uh, line or open or if there is something existing as open source, should I use them. These are the two aspects that is to be considered and some of the issues are open source businesses more and more product companies are using open source approach. Their business model is not reliant on selling a software product, but selling support for the uh, product as I have already said, because it is open source and lot of people are working on it, supporting support is an issue and they believe that involving the open source community will allow software to be developed more cheaply, more quickly and will create community of users for the software. If we know that the components are available, most of the components are even some of the components in the open source, we can take them, use them, integrate them with our application and there are certain rules and regulations to, uh, to control it. We will see those things uh, in the coming slide, but basically it is possible so that it becomes easier to develop new software cheaper and faster. So, open source licensing, these are the three types of license that is basically uh, uh, the legally the developer of the code is uh, either a company or an individual still owns the code that is the uh, bottom line. They can place restrictions on how it is used by including legally binding conditions in an open source software license. That means, they can if anybody wants they can use the code but uh, they may not uh, make modifications for it for example. Some open source developers believe that if an open source component is used to develop a new system, then that system should also be open source. That means, if I am using the open source component and if I develop it, I cannot claim proprietary uh, ownership of that because I have developed using open source. So, my final product should also be open source that is one of the conditions. Others are willing to allow their code to be used without this restriction that is uh, another BSD licensing or something like that. The developed systems may be proprietary and sold as closed source systems. This is uh, another license. So, there could be different uh, license types and restrictions and things like that, but uh, basically open source uh, is becoming popular 
and uh, for a normal person he can use those products uh, easily and then you know uh, versions are available lot of people are working on it. So, it depends on the need and uh, the willingness of people to use open source. So, the license models are the GNU general public license which is known as GPL. This is so called reciprocal license that means, if you use open source software that is licensed under GPL license then you must make that software open source it is the first one what we discussed. The second one is lesser general public license that is LGPL is a variant where you can write components that link to open source code without having to publish the source of your components. Okay. And the third one is as we discussed like uh, Berkeley BSD license this is a non reciprocal license that means, which mean you are not obliged to republish any changes or modifications made to open source code. You can include the code in proprietary systems that are sold. Okay. So, these are the license management issues that is establish a system for maintaining information about open source components that are downloaded and used this is also very important because once we download it and use it we have to keep track of it. So, that again we will not reinvent the search and other operations be aware of the different types of licenses and understand how a component is licensed before it is used it is very important otherwise there could be legal issues. Be aware of evolution pathways for components educate people especially developers about open source availability and the rules and regulations legal aspects etcetera have auditing systems in place. So, that we know that what uh, products we are using what open source products we are using and with what conditions they will come to us and are we legally compliant with those conditions and participate is one of the very important things especially for students and developers in open source community. So, that uh, you come to know about uh, so many developments that is happening and then uh, you know networking and then increasing the uh, skill level and all those things. So, be active in open source community that is one of the important aspects. So, winding up the key points uh, uh, what we have considered for uh, this session is uh, when developing software you should always consider the possibility of reusing the existing software either as components or services or complete systems and configuration management is the process of managing changes to an evolving software system. It is essential when a team of people are cooperating to develop software. The third point is most software development is host target development that means, operational and development area uh, development. You use an IDE on a host machine to develop the software which is transferred to the operational machine or the target machine for execution. Open source development involves making the so source code of the system publicly available. This means that many people can propose changes and improvements to the software. So, this completes our uh, module. Thank you.